Some money, some riches, along with knowledge, if you got that, you're the most powerful person on the world on the earth. You got knowledge and wisdom and money? Are you so serious? You a bad man or woman of God. This is what we got to understand how to come at God. This is how we know our weapon. This is what we need. Instead of always praying for things, mm. praying to get stuff for our benefit. No, no. Learn how to do it right, and you can get all those things later. <clears throat> he said, seek the kingdom. And all these good things shall what? Yeah. Follow you. It's going to come. But you got to seek it with the knowledge of God. Go ahead. 14. And if thou will walk in my ways, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. He keep going. He tell me, then I will lengthen your days. If you walk as your daddy walk. Maybe your father, we got a very important responsibility of teaching the household mm -hmm. what we're supposed to do. Just put it out there. Ain't nobody tell you to go try to beat them on the head with it. Just put it out there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 15. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. He started service. Once he heard all that, he started praising the Lord and serving the Lord with his substance. This is what prayer, this is what a powerful prayer life will do for you if you come at God correctly. But we got a lot of knowledge, but we don't come Ask him the right way. You got to give some, you, know, you got to sweeten the top, sweeten God ears for a minute. He came praising everything about his dad and what he did with Israel, and he would, he would, he would just praising him. But we come to ask him, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. No. You finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Luke 18. Let's explain, let me explain um, how not to pray. <laughs> <clears throat> Luke chapter 18 let's look at some examples I love examples I can't go wrong with them we can't go wrong with them we deal with prayer the forgotten weapon of man some people got up there ain't praise God by nothing they got to think about what they want to do they ain't saying nothing to God then when they get into trouble Lord help me Lord help me Hey, you put God at the bottom of the totem pole, he's going to put you at the bottom of the prayer list too now. Tap that behind, Satan. And keep tapping it. <laughs> put him at the top of the prayer list, not at the bottom. Luke 18, we're going to start with verse 9. Let's look at an example here on how not to pray. Verse 9, go ahead. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Trusting in who? Themselves. Trusting in themselves. I'm strong. I got money. I got cars. I got everything. I got all these women after me. I got all these men after me. I'm this, I'm that. Trusting in yourself will get you knocked off real quick. Or knocked down on your job, your business, whatever it is, real quick. If you think you did this all by yourself. Go ahead. Verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. So we got a Pharisee and another a publican on tax collector. These two prayers, now listen to them. Go ahead. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Started hating. <laughs> you compare yourself to others. I'm glad they like him, extortionate, unjust, adulterous, even as the publican. This is the example for us what not to do. Don't boast about yourself so much. Amen. Go ahead. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Oh, you give me money. I give tithes. Thank you doing so good. But that mind ain't right. You coming at him wrong. Go ahead. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. This is supplication. Humble. He's like, man, I don't even know what to pray. I'm just going to hold my head down. 
This is what God Jesus said. Go ahead. 14. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Mm. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So don't exalt yourself. I like to do this. I tell, I said, I thank God for this. I thank God for that. I got to include God for it. Then I go into what I'm saying. That's how you do it. Be humble with certain situations. Be humble. Because a lot of times, man, like I said, your light is shining too bright. You need to be in moderation with certain people. You choke them. I'm a choke many. So I learned how to scale my light back from there. I get away from them. And they think I'm just trying to be me. I ain't trying to be me. I know my light is hurting you. Because you taking it personal for me. And too many of us have felt this way. Have seen it happen. But he said, I tell you. Read that again. I tell you. This man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Mm. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. When he said obeys, that means that you know, we brought every, come low with God. Everyone exalt himself. He said, I'm going to make you low. Mm -hmm. If you think yourself highly or too, high minded too much, I'm going to bring you down. I'm going to bring you down. And he that humbleth himself, himself shall be exalted. Humble yourself. Take back, back, back the, uh, what they call it, see in the background. A lot of background singers today, a lot of background, a lot of these singers today were background singers. Because people know this. Who's singing that? Who's singing this? I'm just using that for an example. Kelly Price, Mary J. Blige, and all them background singers. But then they got an opportunity to get out in front. Because mm -hmm. somebody noticed them. Somebody exalted them. All of that. Let somebody exalt you. You don't exalt yourself because sometimes you're not ready for it. You're not. We finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. We just give some examples. Prayer. The forgotten weapon of man. You can't forget this. Matthew chapter 6. Let's see the most effective way to pray. Matthew chapter 6, we'll start at verse 5. Let's see how we can open the God's ears up real fast. <clears throat> verse 5, go ahead. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Who does that sound like? Sunday. I sung it too, but I Israelite brother. Out on the street going ham on a lot of brothers and sisters. On the corners, yelling, doing all that stuff, just calling people by their name. Some of them just because they wearing pants. Anyway, I just want to bring that up. Go ahead. Verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. Yes, sir. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. I tried this. And it works. Did nobody else hear me? And I seen God operate. I tried this. A lot of people pray out in the open, trying to make you give them for what they want. They ain't looking for God. They want to get in front of the church. Well, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. Go to God first and let him work first. Don't try to be out in the open telling everybody what you're doing. Go to God first. He's going to make it right. Then you ain't got to face the embarrassment how, how a lot of times you tell your secrets to people and they come out and attack you with it. This is how you can make God hear you. Go in your closet. I ain't telling anybody you got to go in your closet <laughs> like this. But, well, you know, it's just your private place. Ask him. Just you and him. You don't need a crowd of people. Go ahead. Verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as mm. the heathen do. Mm -hmm. For they think that they should be heard for their much speaking. Stop going with the same prayer over and over and over and over and over again. Believe me, God heard the first time. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Whatever it is you're praying for, thank you that he already done it. 
He heard it. He ain't a man that you got, he losing memory. <laughs> he ain't losing no memory. He know you prayed for it. Go ahead. Verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. See, I told you. He already knows what you need before, he, before you even ask. He knows that. But he wants you to talk right to him. He wants you to tell him, thank you for what you've done for me. And what you're going to do for me. Instead of coming up to demand, Lord, come on, man. I gave you 10% of my money. You should be here. Man, we talking to like that. A lot of people think that way, like, man, come on now. I've been praying times all the time. I should have got that promotion. The Lord offered to leave you now and make sense. You ain't gonna be there. You ain't gonna be there now. You got two more servants. This is the craziness that people think. You trying to tell God, dictate the prayer? Okay. Lord said that like you leave and see what happens. You leave and see what happens. But this is what you should pray. Go ahead. At verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yes, sir. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Yes, sir. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That's the most powerful prayer of all time. If you don't know what to pray for, pray that. That's all you got to pray. Pray that. That covers everything. Yes, everything. And people think, I have a preacher tell me one time, he called me up to pray in the Sunday church. And I prayed this prayer. He said, man, what you cover that baby prayer for? You finish too quick. He wanted me to get up there and do a long prayer. I just did the Lord's prayer. I was done. And he wasn't prepared to get up and speak. So I just did this prayer. He said, this baby prayer. This is the most powerful prayer of all time in this book, man. Amen. Period. That's why we pray it all the time. Go ahead. 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Forgive people. Amen. Trespass against you. Hurt you. Trespass. Lie to you. Trespass. Forgive them. I ain't tell you to forgive them. That's a difference. Forgive them and get them away from them until they can work out their own salvation. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 15. But if you forgive not me in their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. That's pretty big, but that's not. Yeah. This is all in prayer right here. We got to forgive people. We want mercy. We got to forgive the people who trespass against us, call us out our name. Get all this stuff to it that we didn't like. Forgive them. Because I want mercy. I want mercy. Let's go to Acts. Prayer, the forgotten weapon of man. They forgot how to do it. This is how we do it. Israel. Acts chapter 12 and verse 1. See, as a church, we got to know this. We got to pray for each other. See, that's the most, that's the biggest thing you can do for me. Pray for me. Amen. Pray for me. That's the biggest thing. You're going to find out right here in the lesson how it was very, very important to pray as a church. I pray for y'all all the time. Acts chapter 12, we're going to start with verse 1. Let's look at a powerful church here. And what, it, what prayer done for them. Go ahead, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. He said, Herod, this is the king now. Believe me, he ain't like for you to preach in the name of Jesus and all this stuff. He wanted his pagan worship. Go ahead. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. He said he killed James, the brother of John. Also, he killed John the Baptist too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 3, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Mm. Then what the days of unleavened bread. So we got the days of unleavened bread coming on. Mm. But he wouldn't do it then. Go ahead. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarterings of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. 
So he wanted to do it after the eighth pagan day, which is Easter. There's the only spot in the Bible you'll find Easter. And guess who celebrating it? Herod. Herod. Not Israel. He said that the days of the unleavened bread. He wanted to persecute Peter. Go ahead. Verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. You see what he said? The church praying without ceasing for Peter. That's power. When you don't pray for your brother and sister, you're not helping them. Without ceasing, give it to them, pray for them, especially if they're in a bad situation. Go ahead. Verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Yes, sir, because he was in prison at the time. Just because you're in a bad situation, don't get all crazy and outrageous. Calm down. Just wait. Wait on the Lord. Wait on him. I was locked up too. I got crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Call him on my way. Where you at? Where you at? <laughs> my brother says, look at me laughing. But go ahead. <laughs> Verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison. The who? The, the angel. angel of the Lord. Angel. Cause of what? The church was praying without ceasing. Pray for your brothers and sisters in here and the nation of Israel. Pray for them. He said, God said, an angel there. Let's see what this angel did. Go ahead. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and the light shined in the prison. Yes, sir. And he spoke Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his, and his chains fell off from his hands. Wait a minute. He went up there tap. Hey, man, get up, get up. And when he got up, he was shocked at the chains that fell off of him. Mm. Man, that's some power right there. No key. Chains that fell off of him. Mm. This is the power of prayer of the church. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Go ahead. What happened? And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Yes, sir. Put, put your shirt on your, on your arm and come on, hurry up. You ain't got time to put it on. Go ahead. And he went out and followed him. And wished not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. He thought he was dreaming. He's like, man, I thought I was dreaming. Get out of prison like this. This ain't never happened. Go ahead. When they were past the first and the second war, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. Wait a minute, the angel walking and the gates just opening? This is the power. You don't see these angels around us. If you got faith enough, they are there. Yes, sir. Amen. Psalm 34 said an angel encamps around us. Amen. Get to know this. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street. And forthwith the angel departed from him. The angel departed from him. Go ahead. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Boy, that, that, that would amp your faith up. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He said, Surety. Man, you see this angel walking, walking behind me. You know, he got four heads, six wings, cow feet. I don't know whether to fall out or walk behind him. <laughs> I'm walking with this big cat. I ain't scared of nothing. He can see it all. Mm -hmm. This is what the mentality we got to have as believers of the Word of God. They here right now. And Satan ain't just right along there and will. Go ahead. Verse 12. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. Where many were gathered together praying. Still praying. The church still praying. This is the power. This is the weapon. Go ahead. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rona. Yes, sir. Rona came. Go ahead. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Check out what the Israelites said. Go ahead. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. He said, Man, you crazy. You just see this man get locked up. Yeah. That ain't Peter. Check out what else they said. Go ahead. But she constantly affirmed that it was given so. Then said they, It is his angel. It is his angel. Hmm. They have some knowledge here. 
Go ahead. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Yes, sir. But he, beckoning unto them with the hands of hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. Mm. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Believe me, he departed and went into another place because he know Herod going to be after him. Herod going to be after him. Mm -hmm. But God going to fix that. He going to fix that. Let me show you. Keep going. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? Like, man, where Peter at? They're like, hold on, how you get out of here? Go ahead. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Boy, he going to put the guards to death. Y'all let this man out. They don't understand. Go ahead. And, and he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. Go ahead. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain, their friend, mm. desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. You understand? The king was ruling at the time. He was nourishing these people. Ain't nobody come up against the king. Right. Ain't nobody come up against him. But God don't come up against him. Because he know Peter is out. Let's check out what God's going to do to him. Go ahead. Verse 21. And upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. He gave a pride speech. Look at me. Got his hands out. Talking about, about him. Check out what happened to him. Go ahead. And the people gave a shout saying, it is the voice of a God and not of a man. Wait a minute. They said, call him a God. Check this. Go ahead. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eating the worms and gave up the ghost. In a twinkle of an eye, mm. took him out. Then worms started eating his body. <clears throat> All this started with prayer. All of it started with prayer. This is who's on our side. When we doing it the right way. Understand that. Don't be so jacked up in your situation when you just can't pray to God and ask him, hey, what's going on, God? I'm locked up, man. Well, what was the matter? At night, the angel of the Lord came and got him out. Don't worry, it's not going to come and bury you out. Mm -hmm. It might be me, I'll come and bury you out. But this is what we want to understand here. We finish with that. One more. Go ahead. 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. I bet it did grow. When they saw that king up there making that big speech and God struck him, the angel struck him to kill him and worms start eating on him, oh yeah, you got my attention. <laughs> you got my attention. <laughs> and that's why the word needs to be preached like this. Stop going with these little milk toast sermons that these people are teaching these people without yeah. fear. Exactly. This man ain't gonna learn nothing you keep on milk toast, soft preaching. No, you gotta put some fear in there of God. Because you know Israel, if we can get away with it, we're going to get away with it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go to Matthew chapter 17. I'm going to equip y'all. We hear about we hear about an hour and a half. Y'all won't see me no more today. We think you're going to I ain't trying to hold you. I ain't trying to look for you. Anything. You want to talk? Call me. But other than that, you ain't got to be high enough to me. I got no problem myself. Amen. Matthew 17. We're going to start at verse 14. But I'm going to show you what you need. These are more weapons right here. We got to have. We got to have. 17 to 14. Go ahead. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often into the water. See, this character possessed by a devil. Mm -hmm. Lunatic. Falling in the fire and the water. But listen to what happened. Go ahead. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. So the disciples could not cure him. And Jesus taught them how to do it. But listen to what happened. Listen to what Jesus said. Go ahead. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. He got kind of, he got kind of pissed off with these. Mm -hmm. Look, man, y'all need to be working. I ain't going to be with you all the time. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. You got to have a faith. Amen. You got to cast out these demons. Yes, sir. You are, Israel is the one that's supposed to preach the word. But if you're not strong enough to have this, he can't entrust all this knowledge, any type of wisdom, any type of sustenance with you. Because your faith is not strong. Your faith got to be strong. When stuff come up against you, you got to keep coming to the Sabbath class. Keep the Sabbath day. Keep the laws. Keep the statutes. Don't let nobody, no friend, no family stop you from keeping this holy day and the statutes. Amen. He said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? Just like a father telling his children, look, man, I ain't going to be with you all the time. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to handle yourself. But you don't know how to handle yourself. You always looking for me to do anything for you. Somebody else, you're going to be somebody else's slave. They're going to be telling you what to do. Go ahead. Verse 18. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. From that very hour. Pay close attention. He said, from that very hour. It took a whole year. It took a whole hour. So much like that instant gratification. Yes, Jesus sir. did it. They mm -hmm. went like that. No, no. For the whole hour. He don't come out. Right. Watch and see. Sometimes we got to sit back and watch. When prayer is happening, when now all these miracles are going on, it ain't immediately. He said from the very hour. Go ahead. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Yeah, why could we cast my Jesus? Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, mm -hmm. for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Man, that's kind of like small, real small. You can't even see a mustard seed. He said, if you got this kind of faith, you can tell a mountain to move. Man, ain't many of us got that. That's what we got to have. This is a weapon right here. Just a small bit of faith. You can tell that mountain to move. But many of us don't have it. Now here I say us, right? Because every situation is different. Certain people strong in certain situations. Certain people weak in certain situations. It all depends on the situation. But this is how you get the ammunition. Learn what he's talking about. You got to have faith. You can't have that unbelief. I can't have that unbelief. I got to have faith. Grain of a mustard seed. If you got a piece of paper, put a dot of your pen on it. That's how small it is. Very small. But it grows to a large tree. Go ahead, bro. Verse 21. How be it? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fast. So I got to have prayer and fasting. Put that on top. Now you can't eat or drink. How many of us did that now? Mm -hmm. You talking about that food now. They ain't going to do that. They'll pray all day long. But they won't cut that food and drink out. Nah, they didn't see it right there. I gotta eat my chicken. <laughs> I gotta eat my chicken now. Okay. That's I can say we just amping this weapon up. We finish with up. Yes, sir. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Prayer, the weapon, the forgotten weapon of man. We got to have that faith, man. And one man. Matthew chapter 5, we're going to start with verse uh, 43. There's something else we got to do with prayer that most of us don't do. <clears throat> verse 43, go ahead. You have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. A lot of people hear that. Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. What Jesus said, go ahead. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. What? <laughs> I got to pray for each other that hate me and despitefully me? Yeah. you got to bless each other? Yeah. People ain't looking at this. When you do this stuff, people think, man, what's wrong with him? He should be mad with me. What wrong with her? She should be mad with me. No, we, I'm operating when I, I operate in the power of God when I do this. So what? Go ahead. That you may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. So if you're not doing this, you're not the children of the Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. If you hate your neighbor, if you can't bless your neighbor or your enemy, you are not operating as a child of God. Mm -hmm. 
The thing hate in your heart, that hate in your mind. You can't pray for your the enemy. What good are you? What good are me? 